what I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, very briefly is about telematics for the home. Um, as, uh, on the, uh, as a PNC carrier, you probably have heard a lot about uh, car telematics. That's been going on for, uh, for quite a while. And I want to introduce you how some of the same benefits that you've derived on the car side, how you can actually get going, get started uh, on the home side, and how it's not just uh, similar around claims mitigation, uh, which is really uh, what telematics does on the, on the car side, but it's also around customer engagement uh, across, your, uh, across your customer base. So um, at a glance, uh, Roost is a venture funded uh, company. We've been around for about four years. Um, we're headquartered in San Francisco Bay Area and we are focused on delivering a home telematics platform for the property insurance industry. That is our, uh, our only focus. Um, so we are here to help you to be your partner in taking advantage of the smart home revolution. Now, you might have heard of uh, Roost or you might have seen us not uh, uh, maybe easier when I just hold this device up in the air. So this is the first product that we uh, came to market with about two years ago. It looks like a nine volt battery. It works like a nine volt battery. It actually is a nine volt battery, but it's a Wi-Fi enabled cloud connected sensor packed nine volt battery. So what do you do with that? You plug it into your existing smoke alarm and it transforms into a smart smoke alarm. So when that smoke alarm is going off right now, while you're sitting here, you would actually get a notification on your phone. Yeah? Um, we are, you've probably heard of the Internet of Things. We think ourselves, uh, of ourselves as the Internet of Dumb Things. We make dumb things smart. Yeah? That's dumb smoke alarm. We can transform that into a smart one by just replacing the battery. And so it's, it's as simple as replacing a battery to upgrade your home uh, into a smart home. So what is the impact here? Well, when that smoke alarm is going off, when you actually have a fire in your home, and you're home, you're gonna do something about it, even if that means running outside and calling 911. The real issue is when you're not at home. Yeah, fire occurs, and this is actually one of our customers in, in, in upstate New York. Uh, he had just installed our, his roost batteries a couple of weeks earlier. He was at work, gets a notification, and he's kind of skeptical, like, well, what's going on here? He calls his neighbor, neighbor runs over, sees the smoke coming out of the roof, yeah? Uh, calls the fire department, and uh, they're able to be there uh, right away, and they said, if we had been here 15, 20 minutes later, the house would have burned down. What you see here is, was actually the, uh, the in-law unit above the garage that was damaged. It was actually an electrical malfunction of a, a bathroom fan that caused uh, the, uh, uh, the fire. And his house, which is not in the picture here, uh, was basically preserved. So we're not claiming to eliminate or to prevent the fire, but the, the point is, can we actually mitigate the impact of that fire by being able to uh, allow you to respond to it uh, much faster? Now, there is uh, um, no conversations with insurance carriers that within five minutes doesn't start talking about water leaks. Yeah, so um, as we started uh, uh, our discussions with insurance companies, um, very quickly uh, we led to that topic. And so uh, about a year ago, we introduced a second product, which is a water leak and freeze detector. As simple as two rings when water crosses it, uh, it actually gives you an alert. It also has a temperature and a humidity sensor uh, in sight. So uh, alerts for high humidity events or uh, freezing uh, temperature, uh, freezing conditions. There's a couple of locations in the home, under the sink, in the kitchen, uh, in your basement with the water heater behind the washing machine. Three, four locations in the home that are most prone uh, for water leaks. So you can think about it from a claims mitigation perspective, and you're probably all familiar with these kinds of numbers. You as an industry pay out $42 billion uh, to your customers every year, about 10 billion in fire, 10 billion in, in water leaks. And so between fire and water, it's about half of uh, all claims uh, in, in, the, in the US. Now, by being able to go to the source and actually uh, have what we call a finger on the pulse, being able to prevent or mitigate some of these issues uh, from happening, we believe we can have a significant impact uh, on, the, uh, on the industry. Um, it really can help you in transforming how you price insurance based on knowing what that uh, claims impact is. Um, 
I'll, I'll come back to that on how we actually uh, do that, um, because one thing I've learned in the last couple of years is that insurance companies are actually run by a very special breed. I think it's called actuaries. Yeah? Um, and, and I can give you intuition on the, these sensors. They're like $35 retail for a battery and $50 for a water leak. So they cost you a few dollars per year. And if you look at these, imp these uh, uh, claims numbers, that's about $170 for water, $170 per, uh, for fire per year. So I'm sure I have that impact. That's the intuition. Yeah? Do I have a few dollars impact on that claims? It seems like actuaries don't really do intuition very well. Yeah? They, they are looking for the 50 to 100,000 data years uh, worth of data. So I'll, 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 I'll close up with uh, how we actually uh, are working on, on delivering that data set that uh, they're interested in. But apart from a claims prevention mitigation aspect, there is a secondary aspect, or for a lot of carriers, a primary aspect, which is the customer experience. One thing I came to find out is that in the insurance industry, most carriers don't have email addresses, don't have smartphone numbers, don't have a mobile app, or if they have a mobile app, nobody uses it. And this has to do with you're basically disintermediated because of your independent agents. They consider your, their customer their customer, and you have the property address, and then you end up sending postcards in the mail to your, to your policyholders. It's kind of 19th century, yeah, this postcard kind of thing. If you are not talking to me on this thing, you are not talking to me. Yeah? So how do you engage with your customer in this day and age, in this 21st century? And one way of doing that is by delivering something that is of value to your customer. And so, for example, one of our uh, customers, Desjardins, second largest insurance carrier in Canada, they're giving away a water leak and freeze detector to each one of their customers. Customer gets a water leak and freeze detector, that's a very useful thing. The insurance company gets an email address, smartphone number, mobile app installed, and establishes that digital communication uh, channel. Yeah? Not only that, once you establish that digital communication channel, well, now you can, for example, send severe weather alerts. We just announced a relationship with IBM Watson, the weather company, uh, who's outside there as well, to deliver severe weather alerts. Think about that in the day and age of postcards, when that hailstorm is coming up, that doesn't really work with the postcards, right? So you need that digital engagement. You need to be on this phone to be able to deliver value-added services. Yeah? And so what we're doing is we're actually uh, white labeling our mobile app. We can deliver uh, you a mobile app within 30 days at a very uh, low cost with engagement mechanisms to actually drive downloads, drive uh, that customer engagement, uh, and be able then to deliver additional services on top of that. Coming back to um, the claims mitigation and claims prevention. How do we get to these numbers? Yeah? Well, what we did is like, let's, let, let's, let's take a little bit different tack here. I mean, you, you guys are very familiar with uh, the, the Clue database, yeah? the contribu contributory database uh, mechanism. So rather than one company saying, I'm going to deploy this to uh, uh, 100,000 households and measure this over time, why don't we bring a select group of carriers together in very much the same way as a contributor database works. And so we're basically bringing together five to 10 insurance carriers who are deploying to about 7,000 households each. One uh, on a number, it's a water leak and uh, a battery. To another, it's uh, uh, two water leaks and a battery. We've partnered with Willis Towers Watson, some, one of the most reputable analytics uh, companies, to actually do the crunching. I'm not an actuary, I don't claim to be, um, but they have that skill set to basically do that number crunching and basically be able to deliver in a much more com condensed time frame at a much more affordable price point. And that meaning in the next 12 to 18 months, we will have that 50 to 100,000 data year, statistically relevant, actuarially relevant data to prove what is the claims impact of these smart home devices. 
We announced uh, State Auto uh, Insurance as one of the, the first uh, participants uh, with HTP. This morning, we just announced Country Financial uh, as uh, uh, one of the next ones. We will be announcing a couple more here in the next uh, couple months. But so we're, we're still, uh, if you're interested in, in this, please come see us. We have a little boot uh, outside here. Um, we believe it's gonna be the seminal uh, study in the industry that at the most affordable cost point, going to deliver that data and the impact of what smart home is going to be able to do uh, for you uh, uh, in the insurance industry. On that note, thank you very much and look forward to uh, talking more with you. Uh, great question. Do you only need one sensor uh, for water for the whole house? Think about it in, in this way. How much has your policyholder taught about water leaks in the past year? And you can express it in seconds. Zero. If I deliver one water leak, I have raised that awareness from zero seconds to at least something. Yeah? So the question is, is, you can take one aspect, which is I need to put sensors everywhere, or you can take a different aspect, which is I'm raising the awareness uh, with one sensor at a time, and it's about engagement. I, so for example, Desjardins, they will give you one sensor now, and then a year from now, let's say 60 days before renewal, you might get another sensor in the mail. And so it's basically, over time, you will have several sensors uh, around your home, but it's as much about an ongoing engagement as it is about uh, just having this, your whole home sensorized, set it and forget it kind of aspect. Average home, 1,500 square feet. Um, you, you, there's about, say, three plus, three something locations, one under the water heater, one under the sink, um, if you have a basement or washing machine. So it's three uh, something water leaks would be, I'm not saying we're gonna prevent all water leaks, yeah? But if you wanna uh, prevent a good chunk that are preventable, that's a good starting point. A any other questions? <laughs>